All right, you guys, let's talk about classifying angles. Um, let's start off with some of the stuff that we've already covered. If we have two lines intersecting, then four different angles have been formed here. One, two, three, and four. Uh, the, we've already talked about relationships amongst these angles. Uh, first, uh, we have angles that are across from each other called vertical angles. Vertical angles, in case you need to make a little note, those are the ones that are across from each other. All right, so an example would be angle one and three. And what we know about vertical angles, angle one and three are not only vertical, but they're always going to be the same measure. Really important. So not only angle one and three, but we have a, another pair of angles that would be angle two and four. Again, the angles that are across from each other. Those are called vertical angles. They're congruent by the vertical angle theorem. Another situation we have here, we have what's called linear pairs. All right, a linear pair of angles would be a pair of angles whose unshared rays form a straight line. So angle two and three are a adjacent angles that are next to each other that form that straight line. So an example of a linear pair would be angle two and angle three. Another pair would be angles three and four. Another example would be angles one and four. And the last linear pair that exists here is angles one and two. Now the linear pair theorem said that any set of linear pair is going to be a half circle worth of degrees. So the linear pair theorem says that their sum will always equal 180 degrees. These are very important ideas that we've already studied. The new idea that's coming in that we'll need to also be able to classify is if we have a second intersection here. If we have a second intersection, now we have a new set of another four angles. Here's fives, six, seven. Now we have eight total angles. And we're going to be comparing one angle from the original group to an angle in the matching group down here. Now the good news about these classifications are very descriptive, uh, but we need to be able to understand those descriptions. All right, first off, um, uh, here's a little bit of other vocabulary. Uh, this line that is basically connecting the two groups, uh, this line is called a transversal. A transversal is simply a line that intersects two or more other lines. That word transversal is gonna be on your test, so that would be important. Transversal, the other two lines are not transversals because they only intersect one line. Okay, so that transversal connects two groups, and we're going to now classify uh, those angles. We're going to take one from one group, compare it to an angle in the other group. First off, we would want to be able to find what's called corresponding angles. Corresponding has to be has to do with position, all right, or 
are angles that match up. So if I take an angle from the top group, let's say I take angle one, that angle is in the top left position. So all I got to do is find out which angle matches up with it in the other group. It's almost like if I pick up these angles and I put them down on here, which ones match up? Well, the top left angle matched up with the top left angle, so a pair of corresponding angles. On the test, you would want to say angle one and angle eight are corresponding angles. This bottom left angle here matches up with the bottom left angle there. Top right angle matched up with top right angle. And then our last set of corresponding angles would be angle three and angle six. So you really got to know corresponding angles. We're just classifying. We don't even, I know we had some relationships certainly going on here. We had congruence going on. We had supplementary going on there. We don't necessarily know much going on here. We're just working out and classifying here. So here's our next classification. We would need to be able to find what's called alternate interior angles. Let's see if I can keep this away. Alternate interior angles. So again, very descriptive words, but we gotta understand what they're talking about. The interior, all right? We're talking about in between the two lines. So when we're talking about interior, we're talking about in between the two lines. Outside of those lines would be what's called the exterior. We have exterior down here. We have exterior up here. Very descriptive words. Alternate is referring to the transversal. We're looking for angles that are on alternate sides of the transversal and on the interior of the two lines. So again, we're always choosing one angle from one group and comparing it to one angle in the other group. First, they need to be interior. So out of these four angles, there's only two on the interior. So I'm gonna choose one, let's go with angle four. So when I come to the other group, I want the angle to also be on the interior, but on the alternate side of the transversal. So if I'm gonna go with angle four, the alternate interior angle is gonna be five. There's another pair, I could have gone with angle three. The alternate interior angle is going to be angle eight. And that's all of the alternate interior angles that we have. Let's go to the next one. Same side interior angles. Again, very descriptive. But this time, instead of being on alternate sides of the transversal, I want my angles to be on the same side of the transversal. Still need to be on the interior. So if I go with four, I want the angle that's also on the interior in the other group, but on the same side, that would be angle four and eight. The other pair would be angle three and five. Let's go with another grouping. Uh, what about alternate exterior angles? Same descriptive words. I want them to be on alternate sides of the transversal, but on the exterior. So if I choose one of the exterior angles, there's only two in this top group. Let's go with angle one. I come down to the other group, I want another angle that's on the exterior, but on the alternate side of the transversal, that would be angle one and angle six. 
See if you can quickly in your mind think of the other pair of alternate exterior angles. If you said two and seven, you're doing a good job. We could do same side exterior. We could have every possible combination. Uh, but I think we're doing pretty good if this makes some sense. Good luck with this topic. Good luck on the homework.